I think we got our culprit right there. So, got the system pressurized. We at, but actually no pressure at all. Actually, <laughs> but still we got enough to. So this uh, this hose has to be replaced, and that's about it. Definitely leak out. There you go. Yeah, this whole line is rotted. I just gotta go get a new one. Splice it up from here to there. And that's about it. No big deal. Alright guys, so we're back at the BMW. I showed you uh, what the leak was about. At least the one that I saw. So of course, uh, this is already rotten, so it has to be replaced because this one never gets saved. So we're replacing both the upper radiator hose and the uh, the one going through the expansion valve. We got both parts right there. I will link in the description. I will send you a picture of that. So this is a quick tip because most of the time they're going to be really, really stubborn to try to take them out. So what you want to do is soak them in penetrating oil or some type of uh, silicone lubricant all three of them right there that fitting right there this fitting right here and that fitting and just give it some time to soak in and add as needed and then you release the clamp and you go as easy as possible what you want to do is just shock it don't try to pull it back um, you just want to shock it a little bit actually I need something a bit smaller there you go okay you know shock right so clamp is out on that side Clamp is out on this side, and the last one. All right, so now, what you wanna do is, which I'm gonna need two hands for, but I'm gonna put a prying object right there. You see there's a ridge right there. And you're gonna just tap it lightly and go around it, tap it lightly, just tap it. Don't try to do nothing else, especially on the radiator side, because that's plastic on plastic. This is notorious for breaking, we don't want that. And this is what I'm talking about. Look at that. So this is actually coming from this part right here. And it's completely shot and separated. You see how glued that is to it? So imagine now, this is aluminum to plastic. Imagine what it's gonna be when it's a plastic to plastic on this side right here. So this one, really take your time, man. Trust me. You don't wanna mess that up because you're gonna need a new radiator, no doubt about it. So I'm gonna keep, keep soaking it, mess with it very lightly until it comes off, however long it takes. That's what you wanna do. There you go. A lot of patience, a uh, lot of, you know, just prying very lightly, um, spraying it, making sure you go in and out, in and out, and you know, a lot of prayers at the end of the day. Because if the radiator is really, really old and brittle, um, you're not gonna save it, I'm sorry, I don't care how gentle you are. So, thank God we got it. So now we're gonna just lubricate all the O-rings with some uh, silicone spray and just throw it on there and keep it moving. Okay, so here we go. Right there. This one, uh, if you're buying this hose, it's kind of a little bit different. This is the uh, Rhine. Uh, as I said, part number will be there. It's a little bit different, meaning that on the original hose, this side is uh, just a regular rubber hose all the way up to here. Then you have this uh, harder rubber or plastic from here all the way to here, and then you got rubber again. But for some reason on this one, they just made it a uh, hard plastic all the way around, all the way to here. Not sure why. Of course, you got to get your own clamp, and that's what it is right there. Um, this hose fits very snugly. I put this end first, then I put this end in. But like I said, I, I didn't like it. I, you know, the way it fits, you kind of, you know, bend it. But, because I'm so paranoid about this one right here breaking that, uh, yeah. But, you know, everything went well. So now I'm just gonna fill it up with some fluid. We're gonna call it, call it fluid, <laughs> H2O. And I'm gonna pressurize the system and see if we have any more leaks. All right, so pressurize it up to 
what are we saying about 15 psi uh, I'm not sure what the the max is honestly I'm not I'm not saying I'm not seeing any indication of that the cap doesn't say anything about it, it just says four, 140 I'm not sure what that means um, I don't know so yeah, I usually see it at 15 psi so I'm gonna go for 15 psi um, so so far it's holding what time is it right now 7 45 p.m. so I'm gonna leave it here for like 15 or 20 minutes uh, and then uh, We'll see what happens. So far, so good. Right, guys, ah, everything is put back together at this point. Looking at my gauge there, we're still in the 15 PSI range. Um, so, I don't know if I could, okay, there you go, probably that. It kind of moved away from it very slightly after, let me see, almost 15 minutes now. So, I mean, you gotta account for maybe your own equipment and maybe, you know, hey, this is an older car, so I won't be surprised if some of the uh, fittings are somewhat leaking a little bit, but honestly, it's just nothing for me that I gotta be alarmed about for a car that's a 2006. It's a 14 year old car. Yeah, I mean, you will have a few uh, minor leaks here and there, but nothing that will uh, cause alarm. So, uh, I think I'm gonna call this a fix and keep it moving um, until the next time we have anything else to do on this car. So that was it basically. What else did we do on this car? Uh, da, da, a lot. <laughs> I have other videos on the same car. We did the fuel pump. Um, what else did we do? I fixed the door, which I didn't film. The door panel and the lock that I didn't film. Um, I filmed the uh, replacement of the lights, the, the, uh, the, the light module that I did yesterday. Uh, one of them is still not working, that light, so, but I don't think it's a big deal. I think the light itself is bad um, because it was trying to flicker, so it was trying to come on, whatever, so, yeah. So that's about it, 2006 BMW, I had an issue with some low coolant level. Yeah, so if you want the uh, bleeding procedure, it's online. It's quite exhaustive process. Um, I'm not gonna go over that today. But basically it, it involves, uh, me I use a scan tool because that's what works for me. I can actuate the, uh, the electric fuel pump using my uh, scan tool and let it kind of circulate the water through the system and then stop it and check the level and top it off. But other than that, somebody explained that you have to put it into uh, um, put the ignition on, I think put it into drive or something and then press the pedal and it will actuate the pump, something like that. But it definitely is online. So thank you for hanging out and uh, bid you farewell. All right, so anyway, I decided to bleed it. As you can see, uh, the water pump is on and it's cycling. And it's gonna go through this cycle for some time. Uh, sometime. I think it's take about 10 minutes or more. Uh, the way you do this, you don't have a scan tool. Let me show you quickly. All you need to do and get in the car, put the key in, push the button one time only until you get right there. The service engine soon is there. So basically we're on position, right? And then you turn here and you turn the heat up all the way up. So 84 is where it stops. And you turn the fan on to the lowest setting right there. Okay, heat up, that, that, that. Then last tap, gas pedal. You press the gas pedal for 10 seconds. You know, hold it in for 10 seconds. And that's about it. Once you release it, you come outside, you're gonna start seeing, you're gonna hear the pump, but you're gonna start seeing squirting. So you know it's running. That's what you were seeing just now. Uh, the jet stream right there. So let's wait for it. Um, now it's quiet. Hasn't even been that long yet, so. I'm not sure if it's done bleeding or not, but usually it takes a long, lot longer than that. But uh, let's give it some time and see what will happen. But looking at the float for myself, I know I'm already at the maximum level. Because if you look at here, when the float is at the, um, 
minimum level and maximum level. Right there is protruding. That's the maximum level. I'm at the maximum level. So, and I just ran through it one cycle of, I mean, a couple of cycles of the uh, water pump. So I'm pretty sure I don't need to do anything else here. The car is bled properly. Uh, to, to, to help you bleed, of course, you have to release that one right there. This screw, you will, as you're filling it up, before you even get to the uh, water pump actuation and all of that, you want to unscrew that, and you will, you will actually hear the air hissing out. So it definitely is bleeding. So now we're good. I'm just going to put the cap back. Um, I will take it for a spin, but, oh wow. Look at, look at how crumbly that is. Wow, did you see what just happened? It literally broke off. Look at that. Everything is brittle on this car, man. This is insane. Wow. That is crazy. Right, let me try to get these pieces out. Um, oh, it's still bleeding, by the way. As you saw. Still bleeding. But the level is not going down, so I'm not too worried about it. I'm just going to close it off. Let it keep doing its thing. That's it. And uh, yeah, that's about it for me. It's the end of the day, it's up to 8 p.m. I think I had a fruitful day today. Thank you.